So let me start tonight by showing you this. This, look at it. This monstrosity was thrown in the bushes near a primary school at the weekend in, where well, you guessed it, London, of course, where else? It was retrieved and handed to the police. But the fact these murderous things, which by the way wouldn't look out of place in a horror movie, are being carried around our streets, often by teenagers, should shock us all. This goes hand in hand, of course, with the fact that London is on track to see 2021 as being the worst year of teenage killings in more than a decade. So part of Boris Johnson's new beating crime plan that he announced today, which has attracted wide criticism, is the expansion of the controversial Section 60 Stop and Search. Critics say that this type of search is racist, disproportional and ineffective. And while, of course, the devil will be in the detail of the Prime Minister's plans, surely we should be welcoming anything that helps get things like that off the streets. So let's get into that top story. This is, of course, as I said, part of the Prime Minister's crime strategy. He's saying to ease restrictions on stop and search. He wants a permanent relaxing on conditions of the use of Section 60, which allowed the police to search somebody without reasonable grounds in a specific area where they've had intelligence that crime is taking place. This was the Prime Minister speaking earlier to defend the approach, saying, it, well, he said, it's kind and loving. Let's have a look at that. Giving the police the, uh, the, the backing that they need in law to, uh, to, to stop someone, uh, to search them, uh, to relieve them of, of a dangerous weapon. Uh, I don't think that's a, um, a strong arm tactics. I think that's a kind and a loving thing to do. The people who, are, who often support stop and search most passionately are the parents of the kids uh, who are likely uh, themselves to be the victims of life crime. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, give, give in on that. We've got to make sure that we back our police with, with proper powers to stop and search. There you go, that was uh, Boris Johnson speaking earlier out in the rain. That was him announcing, by the way, a wide range of measures. Uh, and how anyone, quite frankly, can get that wet under, under an umbrella <laughs> is beyond me, but I digress. Um, kind and loving, he says, about those measures. So joining me now is Norman Brennan, former police officer, and Mike Omioni, social entrepreneur and campaigner. Mike, let me start with you, please. I've just shown my viewers uh, something that I assume the kids of today would call a zombie knife, which looks horrific. That was pulled out of a bush near a primary school uh, at the weekend. Surely anything, anything at all that helps get those things off the streets are good. Yeah, I mean, that's a good starting point, right? Uh, acknowledging that we all want the same thing here. And, and I think that's something we have to put on the table. We all want uh, less crime. We want uh, young people protected. However, I take issue with the term that anything at this stage is good because now, of course, when we say anything, the question becomes who suffers from certain policies we, we, we put into place. Um, this uh, initial uh, 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 announcement that's come out was a bit baffling to me because I did think we were making progress under Theresa May, who acknowledged that, you know, the policy sounded good. You know, stop and search sounds good. You know, it's a good deterrent. You know, we get knives off the street and stuff like that. But in practice, it's not playing out the way we thought it would play out in that uh, the stops aren't resulting in, in arrest and, 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 and knives being confiscated. And actually, uh, black people are more likely to be stopped and searched. So are we saying then that the biggest predictor for knife crime or for gang crime is being black? Or is something else uh, uh, here the truth? Perhaps the fact that poverty is a big uh, reason for crime. Uh, perhaps the stop and search, if you look at the, the, the data, isn't actually um, 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 uh, having the kind of effect we thought it would have. I mean, it just strikes me as us leaving detail and fact and numbers alone and just going straight into what Boris has become known for now, which is these wild, big uh, ideological beliefs that he just kind of uh, uh, goes on with, irrespective of what campaigners say. So, uh, Norman, what would you respond to Mike there, that this is disproportionately uh, affecting the black community, for example? Sadly, knife crime and homicide uh, disproportionately affect the black community. Um, the other guest suggests that um, Theresa May was uh, pretty good as far as uh, knife crime and stop and search was concerned. <clears throat> Under Theresa May, the stop and searches went down. Um, knife crime between 2014 and 2019 
went up expeditiously 80% from 24,000 uh, crimes a year to nearly 46,000 crimes a year. Why do police stop and search? Forget the colour. The primary role of a police officer is to keep the peace and protect life and property. There are too many black mothers and fathers planning funerals instead of futures, bright futures for their children. The police have a responsibility to stop these children being murdered. And if it means stop and searching those that we know or believe that are carrying knives, every single person, and there are tens of thousands of people, literally every day, that are walking around our streets, black and white, with a knife, they are potential killers. Nobody ever seems to come up with an effective alternative. All they seem to do is condemn the police for trying to save lives. I make no apologies for stop and searches. I make absolutely no apologies on behalf of the police service, who I still represent, for saving lives. That is our aim. And I'll be quite honest with you, I'm getting a bit sick and tired of so many different groups that complain, yet police officers rush to scenes where someone has been stabbed or shot. They fall to their knees, patch up gaping holes and save lives. That's the job we do. I make no apologies for the work that police officers do in trying to save lives. And if it means carrying out stop and searches, which is only one tool in the big box, I'm afraid that's what we have to use if it saves lives. And I can assure you it does. So, Mike, let me come back to you. I mean, Norman's saying there that ultimately, in the point that you made at the start, everyone has the same objective, which is to save the lives. Uh, you're saying about perhaps uh, disproportionately racially profiling. Um, but, you know, one of the things Boris Johnson mentioned in his speech today was about some of the families uh, of some of the murdered teenagers. And, you know, there are many, like Damilola Damilo Taylor, for example, his father, he's called uh, for, for uh, stop and search to be used. Uh, in some cases, some of these parents have called, called for it to be used more extensively. So when you talk about ra racial profiling, you know, if you're in an area, and I will be quite blunt here, so please excuse my directness, but if you're in, a, if you're in an area where you've got gangs of black teenagers uh, in gangs attacking each other, you're not going to be stop and searching the local white grandmas in that area, are you? Of course not. Of course not. And I think I want to be very careful because I, I imagine that we're interested in nuanced debate and not just kind of talking points because this isn't a debate about stop and search versus no stop and search. I actually am someone who also believes that stop and search can be part of the, you know, the, the litany, if you like, of tools that can be used to curb crime. But some of the numbers here, I'm going to need your uh, guest to, to explain, right? So uh, the, the report that the, the, the Guardian today uh, spoke about or writ, wrote about this idea that black people in Manchester were 5.3 times more likely to be stopped and search than white counterparts. However, when it comes to finding people carrying anything illegal, um, it was it, it was something like twenty seven point five percent of of um of black people that were found with with, with weapons, um, and twenty five percent of white people that were found with weapons. So there we're talking about stats that are within the margin of error, if you like. So if you've got that kind of stat that's so close. Why are black people five times more likely to be searched? I'm sorry, that can't be a stat we go, oh, well, you know, it happens and it's just something we have to live with because, because stop and search can be dehumanizing when as a race, you know, I, you know, as a black young man, I almost have to expect that wherever I am, I, have to be, I, I will be stopped and searched. Because here's the thing, you know, what you've said about a group of black uh, young uh, people who are in an area that the police have been alerted that, you know, they're, you know, that, that, that crime's taking place and that they're serious threat, that makes absolute sense. But this new announcement is given police to decide, you know, even if there isn't threat, a, 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 a threat of kind of serious violence, they, they can, if they just think something suspicious, then they can stop and search. And ergo, it gives way for some police officers, bad apples in the bunch, whatever you want to call it, to enact this policy in a way that will be discriminatory to black people. That can't be something we gloss over because I, I suspect if, the, if it was the other way around, if you had uh, white people five times more likely to be searched than black people, campaigners would also go, hold on a minute, what's going on? Why are we searching so many black people and not finding anything? Norman, how do you respond to that? 
pretty confused about them stats. In fact, I've heard the same stats for the last 10, 15 years. Let me tell you the reality of frontline policing. I was a police officer for 31 years in London. Six years, I was in a robbery squad. When I used to come in every morning, we used to look at all the crime stats. And I used to look at the demographics of black and white. And primarily, it was about 76% of people that were alleged offenders were black suspects uh, against white suspects. So to balance the books, we didn't go out and think, right, we're just going to stop 50% black and 50% white. We actually went out and challenged those that we thought that were responsible for these crimes. Now, let me add another point about all these statistics that so many millions of people in Britain are a bit confused of. When we got got a, recall, a report of a knife point robbery, for example, someone has been stabbed, seriously injured, or it's a robbery, and there was five to seven youths involved. The areas I policed were primarily black. What used to happen was, is that they used to escape down alleyways through housing estates, and they used to turn their jackets inside out, swap jackets. So what we did, we flooded the area, and we stopped probably dozens of black suspects on that particular night because there were so many. We flooded the area full of police. But because we have to record who we dealt with, we wrote down the details of every stop. So perhaps it was 35 black young men that were stopped. A, they may have been involved, and B, as a witness. On the same night, there might have been seven burglaries committed. Six of them were committed by white suspects. We wouldn't know that because very rarely um, are we on the scene where our suspects are on scene. So whereas the robberies are concerned, we know or suspect who are involved, so we stop and search people. We have live suspects, witnesses. Where it comes to burglaries, that stop and search will be close to zero because the only time we will find out who the suspect is is when we speak to neighbours or do fingerprint checks. And once we do those checks, we're not going to go and stop and search those white suspects. We're going to go out and nick them. So it's right that we put proportionality um, in place. And when black suspects are disproportionately responsible for a disproportionate amount of robberies and serious gun and knife crime, is it hardly surprising that they are disproportionately stopped and searched? And I make no apologies on behalf of the police service for stopping those suspects who they believe are armed and possible killers. OK, thank you, Norman. Uh, Mike, uh, very briefly, if you will, final point to you in response to Norman there. Well, again, I, th I think, you know, he speaks about confusion. I, I am a bit confused, too, about some of that, because, of course, I thank Norman for his service. I, you know, I, I am not a kind of, we don't need the police, uh, let's just have, it, have at it. We're all pull, trying to pull in the same direction here. What I think needs uh, work is I need people to explain, not just using anecdotal evidence of what they've seen, to explain some of these stats. Why it's the case that it seems like the people who are being caught you know, whether white or black, the percentages are equal, but people who are being searched, uh, uh, black people are searched five times more. That's a number that we can't scratch ahead and go, it just happens. That's something that someone's going to go some way to explain uh, uh, to me. Question also, what's really important Mike. to note is that... Mike, sorry. very quick question, because I'm so sorry, but we're out of time, and it is a super quick question. We're talking about the number of people that are black people disproportionately um, stopped and such. Do you have any numbers uh, for, in terms of gang crime, teenage gang crime, for example, what percentage of that is made up by the black or the white or different ethnic minority groups? I don't have that number to hand. I'm calling here the race equality report that was released uh, on Tuesday, but um, I would love to see that too. You know, I'm, I'm not just kind of arguing an ideological point here. I'm saying if we're going to change the rules, let's do it based on data, not an odd, cheap, uh, you know, ideological kind of fetish, it seems, that Boris Johnson has. Understood. OK, I think purely just for time reasons, gentlemen, I do need to leave it there. Thank you both uh, for your time tonight. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.